And now you have what? The integral of that is mv uh, final squared over 2 minus mv initial squared over 2. As a matter of fact, here is the point where they say, OK, we're going to define this thing as kinetic energy. OK? In other words, the, the motivation for defining kinetic energy arises out of this proof. So this thing is defined as kinetic energy and the reason it's called kinetic is because it has to do with motion, right? The word kinetic means motion. So velocity, so as, if an object has velocity, it's got kinetic energy, it's got motion. But the kinetic energy of an object is the velocity squared. So if you double the velocity of an object, if, if, if uh, V doubles, kinetic energy quadruples, right? Uh, goes up by a factor of 4. Let's write it this way. Goes up by a factor of 4. If V triples, then the kinetic energy go, does, does what? Up by a factor of 9. If V quadruples, kinetic energy goes up by a factor of 16. Usually they teach this to you when you're uh, learning driver's ed. They say if you double your speed, your distance ought to stop is quadrupled. So be careful for your speed, right? If you triple your speed, your distance of stopping goes up by a factor of nine, ninefold. Okay, if you quadruple the velocity, your distance to stop is multiplied by 16. And not only that, if you hit somebody in front of you, the damage that you do to their car and your car is proportional to your kinetic energy, not your velocity. You see? So if you double your speed, the damage of the accident is four times worse. Triple your speed, the damage of the accident is nine times worse. So if you're going from a speed of 60 to 80 miles an hour, most people think to themselves, okay, I'm going from 60 to 80. Okay, it's only 20 miles an hour more. So the ratio is what? 80 to 60 is four thirds. Ratio of four thirds. So they think, oh, what is the ratio of four thirds? 1.33, come on. But you gotta square that, okay? The damage of the accident is 1.33 squared, which is 1.7689, okay? If you go from 60 to 90 miles an hour, that's 1.5 squared, 2.25 the damage. Okay, so you go to 60 to 90, the damage that you could do to somebody or yourself is uh, double, more than doubled. Okay, so you have to always explain to people, don't look at your V, look at your V squared. I'm sure people will understand, right? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, they, will, they might not get all the math and everything, but at least explain to them that really a little change in V changes your um, um, accident by a lot, a lot. Okay, so so in this chapter then, and from now on, when you are given certain problems, even if you could do the problem with Newton's laws, you're expected to not do them with Newton's laws. Although you can use Newton's law to check your answer. Okay, so let's say on the test, which is on chapter 7, 8, 9, uh, you could, uh, let's say you're given a certain problem and you say to yourself, well, I could do that with Newton's laws. So have, keep that in the back of your mind. First do it with work energy approach and get the whatever answer. And then if you've got some time, you can check your answer with uh, Newton's laws approach. Find that it's just simply going to be work over time. Okay. Sometimes you see this equation in the book. Let me just dis uh, talk a, for a minute about this equation. Power is the dot product of force times velocity. 
Now, how did they get that? And then what's the difference between that and this? Okay. Right, let me describe that. This one is the one that you would use if you wanted to calculate the overall power, the average power. You could also calculate the instantaneous power with this if you knew the instantaneous work. Let's say the work was changing as a function of time. You could calculate the instantaneous power by doing the instantaneous work function divided by uh, the t. However, what you're going to get, let's say you have something like this. Let's say somebody told you the instantaneous work function as a function of t was t squared minus 4 uh, joules. Then you can get power instantaneous by just simply dividing that by t. Uh, t minus 4 over t watts, you know. You could use that one. But the usual usage of this is for average power. Let's say you drag something a certain distance, and it asks you what's the power that you for the whole trip. So you get the work for the whole trip, and then you divide it by the total time of the trip. Okay. This one is usually used for instantaneous power. So p as a function of t, you see? So how, is, uh, how uh, do we derive this equation? Well, let's show you here. If you use the definition of power, power is defined as work over time. And work is equal to integral f dr, right? Now, if we want to do instantaneous power, then we would uh, what, what we would do is we would take dw dt. Oh, you know what? Uh, what I just said over here, that's a good thing. Uh, this one is wrong. No, this one is wrong. Hold on. The power, the power average would be work over time. The power instantaneous would be dw dt. Yeah, I wouldn't just go work divided by t. So the power instantaneous is, uh, this one would be 2t. Yeah, the 4 would disappear. The reason why I did that, usually this form, this form of the uh, equation is not used that often. Usually this one is used for instantaneous. So uh, you would take the derivative of this, you would get 2t, the 4 would just completely disappear. So if you take this and you compare it to this, you're going to see that they're the same equation. Power would be dw dt, and then w is defined as work so you're taking d of dt of this, OK? d by dt of the integral of f dr. And then you have, uh, you take this into, you go df uh, uh, times dr dt. So in other words, you take the uh, the differential inside of the integral, and you have df dt, and you have like this, and you have like this. So this one is df dotted into the v, right? Which would be f dotted into the v. So if I want to know the instantaneous power at any time, simply just take the dot product of the force with the velocity, and you would get, uh, you would get. Uh, so again, it comes out a scalar, and the units would out, would work out to be this would be newtons times meter per second, right? So that would be newton meter, which is a joule, divided by a second. So again, the units work out to be watts. So unit-wise, it works out. Scalar-wise, it works out. So it's equivalent to doing this way. And then this one is used for power average. OK, so now 